there was one more part to the last question we didn't do yet. This is uh, part D. Again, we don't necessarily need to use the quotient rule here. We can rewrite this as 9 fifths x to the negative second power. This is something like we saw earlier in this thing. To apply the derivative, we just use the constant multiple rule. This is 9 fifths. The derivative of x to the negative second, bring the power down, reduce the power by 1. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. So we get f prime of x is equal to 9 fifths times negative 2. It's going to give us negative 18 fifths x to the negative third. But again, we don't want to leave it with a negative exponent. So let's do the reciprocal. We'll move that term down into the denominator. And we get the f prime of x for this example is negative 18 divided by 5x cubed. The next thing we're going to look at is the derivatives of the other four trigonometric functions. So we can recall from earlier, we know the derivative of sine and cosine. The derivative of the sine of x is equal to the cosine of x. And we also saw that the derivative of cosine of x is equal to negative sine of x. Because the other four trig functions can be written as either quotients or reciprocals of these two known functions, we can actually derive the remaining four derivatives rules for the trig functions by just simply using the rules for sine and cosine along with the quotient rule. Okay. I'll skip those derivations, but we'll cut right to the formulas. The derivative with respect to x of the tangent of x is going to be the secant squared of x. The derivative of the cotangent of x is going to be negative cosecant squared x. The derivative of secant x is equal to secant x times tangent x, and the derivative of the cosecant of x is negative cosecant x cotangent x. It's my opinion that in order to memorize these, and you will have to memorize the derivatives of all six trig functions, to kind of memorize them in pairs. The sine and cosine kind of have compatible forms where you can kind of memorize those together. Again, similarly, tangent and cotangent have some similarities and also the secant and the cosecant somewhat share some, some similarities. So if you kind of group them and kind of look at similarities and differences, it can kind of help to cut down on the memorization. The other trick that's pretty common in terms of memorizing the signs, the S-I-G-N's that is, not the sine function, but we have three trig derivatives that are going to be positive and three trig derivatives that are going to be negative. The, the device that a lot of students kind of like to memorize is that if you have a trig function that starts with a C, it's going to have a derivative with a negative sign. So, for example, derivative of cosine is negative sine. Derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared x. And derivative of cosecant of x is negative cosecant x cotangent x. So if you're taking the derivative of a trig function and it starts with a C, it's going to have a negative in its formula. If you start with a trig function that does not have a start with a C, like your sine tangent and secant, then they will have positive derivatives. Let's take a look at example 7. In example 7 part a, we want to find the derivative of x minus the tangent of x. This is the difference of two functions, therefore it should be just the difference of the derivatives. The derivative of x we know is 1. And now one of our brand new rules from this section, the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. So y prime is going to be 1 minus secant squared x. If we come over to the next part, this is y equals x secant of x. Pay close attention to the form at its heart. x secant of x, is that's a product, which means we need to use the product rule. This is the product of the function x with the function secant of x. So we start to execute the product rule. It's the derivative of the first function. Derivative of x is 1. Leave the secant alone, plus, now we're going to leave the function x alone, we need to multiply by the derivative of the secant of x. Our new rule, the derivative of secant, is secant x tangent x, and this gives us our derivative. So y prime is equal to secant of x plus x secant of x tangent of x. Let's take a look at example 8. 
we are asked to differentiate both forms of y equals 1 minus cosine of x divided by sine of x, which is equivalent to the cosecant of x minus the cotangent of x. Again, if you were presented with this function in this form here on the left-hand side, 1 minus cosine of x divided by sine of x, it's entirely possible to avoid the use of the quotient rule because we're dividing by just a singular term. You could split it apart, write each term in the numerator over the denominator, and then via trig identities, this would result in the cosecant of x minus the cotangent of x. Okay. Um, but as a direction say, let's differentiate it in both forms. If I start by doing the derivative with respect to x of 1 minus the cosine of x over the sine of x, this would require the use of the quotient rule. Quotient rule says we're going to do the derivative of the numerator, derivative of the constant 1 is 0, minus the derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. That's the derivative of the numerator. We multiply it by the denominator, and now we subtract. We're going to have the numerator, that's 1 minus the cosine of x, times the derivative of the denominator. Derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, and this is all supposed to go over the original denominator squared, and for the moment I'll just write it as sine of x squared. We want to simplify this the best we can. Inside of this parenthesis, we're going to get a positive sine x. Sine x times sine x is sine squared of x. If I kind of move this cosine around in front, it's like distributing a negative cosine into the second term. That's going to give us a negative cosine of x. And then a negative cosine x times a negative cosine x will give us a positive cosine squared x. And this is all over sine squared x. So this is the derivative we would get if we use the, the quotient rule. If we instead differentiate the right-hand side, d dx of the cosecant of x minus the cotangent of x, first of all, the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant x cotangent x minus the derivative of cotangent is going to be negative cosecant squared x. So in this form, we get negative cosecant x cotangent x plus cosecant squared x. And it's the same function. We did the derivative two different ways. And not surprisingly, we end up getting what seemingly looks like two different answers. However, realistically, these answers are the same, and we can prove that by using trig identities. Okay. First of all, let's look at this, this expression here. Within the numerator, we have sine squared x, and there's also a positive cosine squared of x in the numerator. Some of you might remember the Pythagorean identity from trigonometry that says that sine squared plus cosine squared equals to 1. So we can rewrite the numerator as 1 minus the cosine of x divided by sine squared x. I can then split apart the numerator. I can write 1 over sine squared of x minus the cosine of x over sine squared x. And now through a little bit of identities, 1 divided by sine squared, that's equal to the cosecant squared of x, and then minus cosine x over sine squared of x, I could write as the cosine of x over sine x times sine x, where cosine x over sine, that's going to be the cotangent of x, and then I would have like a 1 over sine of x, which would give us a cosecant of x. And if we compare the two, now it exactly matches up. It is actually the same derivative. We have a positive cosecant squared x term, and we also have a negative cosecant x cotangent x term.